Is your Bull Terrier jumping up all the time and you can't really go out with them because they keep jumping up on people and it's getting a little bit awkward? Let's see if we can help with that. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bull Terrier Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Bull Terrier and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own Bull Terrier. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week, so I would hate for you to miss out on them. The Bull Terrier is a beautiful dog. However, if they're jumping up all the time and knocking people over or just causing issues on the lead, that is not a situation you want to find yourself in. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the CEO and founder of FenrirK9Leaders.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs that won't stop jumping up and then how to deal with that situation and how to put training in to stop that from happening. So if you've got a bull terrier at home that won't stop jumping up, why don't you grab a pen and a notebook and start writing down some notes of the training tips that Will goes over in this webinar. So in this next quickfire webinar, we're gonna be addressing one of the most common, probably the most common problem behavior that as a canine behaviorist, I come across in what I class as the category of more of a, a low level problem behavior, and that is jumping up. Now, depending on the breed that we're talking about, if it's a small dog, then it's an annoying, obnoxious behavior. If it's a large, powerful breed, then it can be incredibly dangerous. Either way, I truly believe that jumping up should be a non-negotiable, is not acceptable behavior and all dogs should be well-mannered, calm, patient dogs. So in this webinar, I'm gonna talk about how I help my clients go through the process of being able to get a dog that is jumping up and is either obnoxious all the way through to downright dangerous to having them as calm, relaxed, patient, well-mannered dogs. Now, yes, there is a very clear behavior modification and intervention strategy that we are going to put into place to be able to very quickly, efficiently, and incredibly effectively deal with jumping up. It's probably the behavior with the most high success rate for pretty much anybody to be able to come in and implement this strategy to high levels of success. Now, if you follow Femrir at all and you've watched any of our other videos on YouTube or these webinars, you will know that it, I believe it is incredibly important and the vast majority of the work that we do isn't simply putting plasters on behavior problems we consider that the micro issue now as behaviorists we help people address those problems I'm going to help you with that in today's video but we focus on the macro issue and the macro issue behind all behavior problems is a lack of leadership on the owner's part so whether you're coming at this from potentially being interested in being a professional and you want to help your clients with behaviors like jumping up or you're watching this because you are struggling having your dog display some of these behaviors you must always start by readdress restructuring that relationship and addressing the issue of leadership the owner in that dog's life must become a high level canine leader that has the dog that will look up to them for guidance and direction if you can achieve that then you open up a communication pathway between you and your dog when you have that pathway wide open it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you do want and it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you don't want them to do and in this circumstance that is what we need to be able to so quickly and efficiently address the behavior of jumping up hey guys very quickly i just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. 
So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. So here at Fenrir, to help people go through that process of restructuring that relationship, putting in rules, boundaries, and expectations for their dog, to be able to have them see the owner as the leader in the scenario, as we go through our one month bootcamp program that we designed. I've completely lost track of the amount of people that that has helped to achieve this to incredibly high levels of success. We have a version of it that we do in person with clients and we also turned it into an online version so that anybody all around the world can do exactly the same thing and achieve exactly the same levels of extreme success and there'll be a link down in the description box below if you're interested by the way but that is about implementing rules boundaries and structure and expectation for the dog that allows them to flip that mentality to see the owner as the leader simultaneously it's about teaching the owner the theories concepts and principles to become a higher level canine leader themselves the combination of the two things gives us the desired outcome of a dog that sees them as an owner opens up that communication pathway and through that pathway then allows us to address these behavior difficulties and problems incredibly easily easily compared to simply facing going and attacking the micro problem and trying to put a plaster on it we address the macro problem and nine times out of ten the micro problem goes away on its own anyway and if it doesn't then we can come in and implement an incredibly easy strategy to address the problem and that's what we're going to talk about now in terms of a dog that's jumping up a lot so once we've restructured that relationship, it is then really easy to address a dog that's jumping up to the levels of like 100% success rate. It is a very straightforward process to be able to stop it happening. We need to correct the dog's negative behavior, which is jumping up. We then need to redirect them and show them what it is that we do want from them instead. And when they're displaying that desired behavior, we reinforce it. So if right now you've got a dog that jumps up all of the time, that's the undesirable behavior up here. And the desirable behavior is right down at rock bottom in terms of being calm waiting patiently with good manners we're going to correct this behavior which makes that happen less frequently and we're going to positively reinforce this desired outcome which will mean that that will happen more frequently we do the same both things at the same time and very quickly we get to a point where we're at the desired outcome all of the time and we don't need to use corrections anymore so in terms of what we do is we set up drills and we practice when we get a friend or family or you as the trainer if you're doing this in a professional setting you can go through the door the dog wants to come and welcome you i recommend utilizing a slip lead on the dog the second that that dog wants to jump up or is about to jump up we can't do it before because that's not fair we need to do it with perfect timing to let them know exactly what it is that we're correcting and that we don't want them to do we're going to use that slip lead with a very firm vocal inflection shoulders back chest up and we're going to use a verbal correction whilst pulling them down and we're not tug of war in them down it's just a quick pop alongside the verbal correction to let them know that is not acceptable stop doing that we never ignore problem behaviors good leaders don't ignore problems good leaders address problems head on fairly but efficiently and swiftly, and then they move on straight away. That's what we need to do with our dogs. So the behavior happens, the negative behavior. I like to use an at, at but you can use a no, a tss noise. Some people even like to put uh, pennies in a can, uh, rings that you can jingle, some kind of verbal auditory response to let the dog know stop doing what you're doing again i like to use an at, at so i'll use that as an example now so the dog's about to jump up i've got my lead and it's an at, at chest up vocal inflection ah no any version that you want to use let them know that right now bam that's not acceptable we don't do that anymore stop it and then we move on it's that quick a correction is on and off it is over as quick as it starts we don't sulk with our dogs we don't get into a tug of war we don't fight with them we just let them know swiftly fairly and quickly that is not acceptable brilliant then it's not fair on the dog to then not let them know what it is that we do want from them instead so when it comes to jumping up the best and most efficient way is the correct the, the undesirable behavior of jumping up we redirect to sit and stay we ask for a stay and then we reinforce that behavior so that stay could be one second so that process altogether might look as something as simple as dog goes to jump up ah, sit good boy yes good and then we stroke and we reinforce and we reward that behavior 
Very straightforward, very simple. Next time we drill it, we might go for a two second stay before we reinforce, then three seconds, then five seconds, and 10 seconds. And we build up that concept in the dog's mind of not only what I don't want you to do, but what I want from you in all six situations and scenarios is to sit, be patient, calm, and quiet. If you do that for me, then excellent things are gonna happen. Going through that boot camp process, we teach tons of different drills and ways that you can do that as well. In terms of at feeding time, we get our dogs to go into a nice sit, stay, and calm before they get access to food, before they get access to toys, before they get access to welcoming up onto the furniture. We drill into the dog this concept of if you want something nice, I want to give it you. I love you more than you will ever know. And I want you to have a wonderful, happy life. And I want you to have everything you ever want. But to get those things, all I ask, because I am in charge, I am the leader in this situation, is that you sit and you wait calmly, patiently, with good manners. If you do that for me, you can have anything that you have ever dreamed of. If you're obnoxious, you're annoying, you're barking, you jump up, then I'm going to tell you for that. I'm going to swiftly correct swiftly and fairly efficiently with 100 percent consistency so there's no confusion every single time i'm going to tell you that is not acceptable this is what i want you to do when you do that thing for me then good things are going to happen it isn't rocket science which is why you can have such high levels of success at kind of any level of leadership anybody can understand those concepts and theories implementing it is where it gets difficult because you can't be lazy you have to be disciplined you have to put in those rules boundaries and expectations and you have to stick to them 100% of the time if you do that you will have a perfect dog if you can help your clients do that they will have a perfect dog theory isn't rocket science implementation of it takes a little bit of discipline but if you're willing to put in that discipline I guarantee you're gonna have incredibly high levels of success so there you go guys some really useful training tips that you're gonna be able to put into practice straight away with your bull terrier that won't stop jumping up I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear all about your bull terrier or whether you're thinking about getting one. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell and I'll see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Bull Terrier Show.